Welcome back. Okay, so in this particular case, I don't need to see the files palette. So under Window, Command Shift F, Macintosh, Control Shift F for Windows. Now pay close attention to this next step. And again, we're working in CS6. Everything in this particular video here, we can do in earlier versions of Dreamweaver, CS5, CS5.5. But again, if you're serious about making money with this and you want to benefit from the most current tool set using HTML and CSS3, things like animation and transitions using CSS3, and you don't want to write code from scratch, then definitely get your hands on Adobe Dreamweaver CS6. Okay, now here's what we need to do. We're going to build our image, we're going to basically build on top of a tracing image. Now, exactly how it sounds. Just like a tracing image when we were in the third grade and we couldn't draw anything. You put tracing paper over the little deer and you basically drew around it and right away you're a Picasso. So I'm going to make a total Picasso out of you for web development using my time-tested simple, simple, simple techniques. And I can assure you these are techniques you're not going to find in somebody else's video because they're too into the code. I don't know why Dreamweaver writes the code for you. Now for those of you that think this is a kiddie class, let me caution you on something. I build six-figure websites. Last year, I built, I forget if it's six or seven. I had a very busy year, and then the summer was a little slow. But I built multiple six-figure websites, and I'm talking sites for $120,000, $147,000, totally using Dreamweaver. Now, in addition to that, it had some really cool things in it, like PHP, my SQL, XML files, and those are all the techniques that I teach you. Okay, and that was very robust sites. And I'll be very honest with you, not one of those six figure sites took me longer than six weeks, six to eight weeks to put it together. So if you work smart and you listen to my exact techniques, I'm here to help you every step of the way. My whole battle cry is squeezing the sponge on the software and letting you work smart because time is money. So while your friends, your code friends are out there typing in code from scratch, you're making money sitting on a beach earning 20%. Uh, that's my reference to Die Hard, one of my favorite movies. Anyway, let's move forward. So here's what we need to do. First of all, page properties, modify page properties. We talked about that in the previous video. That's under modify command J, Macintosh, that would be, I'm sorry, command J, Macintosh, Windows, that would be control J. Okay, so here is my page properties. And based on these choices, these choices, we're going to go down here to tracing image. Now, if you haven't seen this type of video before with the tracing image, I didn't make it up. I'm just a humble servant of letting the tools work for you. And this is exactly what it was meant to be used as. But I have a little bit of a twist on it because I take this one step further and show you how to do it very, very simply. So we're going to browse to our tracing image. So select image source. And based on these choices, we intelligently put it in a folder called comps. Well, it makes sense to me. I didn't just put it in a folder someplace on my computer. I made sure it was part of this media loot folder, which we cite to find as my root folder. So I'm going to double click here and bring this in. Now, if I hit the apply option, that's going to basically show that as a tracing image. Now, what do I mean by a tracing image? That means I can type right over on top of it. Okay, if this was a background image, you can do that as well. But see, I don't want to make this a background image. I want to make it a tracing image. Now, the other cool thing about a tracing image is if I command J again, and if I go back down to tracing image, I can adjust the opacity of my tracing image. And if I the apply option. So depending on what you want to see or not see, now for color sampling, I probably want to have my opacity totally up. So in this particular case, I'm just going to keep it by default at 100%. Okay, make a change, save a change. Now, here's a very important part before we move forward. Notice that even though this is a tracing image and I can put stuff over on top of it, the problem here is that I have some kind of padding in here. I'm just gonna I have my rulers up here. Now, rulers have to do with view, view rulers. Rulers command option R, Macintosh control, I'm sorry, command option R, Macintosh control alt R for Windows. 
So if your rulers are up, you can actually drag yourself a series of guides here. Now, we're not going to use our guides right now. We'll use our guides later. But what I want to share with you is right now I have some kind of margin or padding space in here that I don't want to see. So the first rule that I suggest that you put on your styles palette, CSS styles, I'm going to come down here. There is nothing to select. So I'm just going to put in what's called the wild card the universal selector, which is my asterisk tag. So I'm going to basically click right here. Now, what does this say? This says new CSS rule. So I'm going to put my cursor right there and make myself a new CSS rule. And I'm going to pull my menu down to compound. Now, compound basically means a combination, which means more than one. But unfortunately, I can't do the asterisk tag in any other choice here besides compound. So I'm going to double click here and I'm just going to hit the shift key and the A key, which makes the asterisk, the asterisk tag, this guy right here. And I'm going to hit OK. Now, important step here. Okay, for those of you that have seen other people's videos, and I won't mention any names, but pretty much every other video will get you started by having an external style sheet. That's bad, bad, horrible, despicable technique. And I really mean that because it's giving you bad information. So if you're going to have different versions of your website, how can your website be different versions, color, width, height, if it's tied to the same external style sheet? The answer is it can't because Life Rule 101, same and different, can't coexist. So how can you go to the same external style sheet and have different pages, different versions of your page? The answer is you can't. So any, and I will say the word, any knucklehead out there telling you that you want to make an external style sheet for a single page document, because that's all documents are until you start building the site, right? Everything starts with a single page. So before I start making my other pages, I just want to make sure that my page, my CSS styles are internal to this document. Otherwise, I cannot have different versions. So take my word for this, guys. Any fool out there that's telling you otherwise doesn't understand real world production techniques. And if you meet them, tell them I said so. Okay, I'm going to hit OK. Now, based on these choices, this is my CSS rule definition for the asterisk tag. We're going to select the box category, category of box, again, choices. And we're going to type in zero tab key is in times and zero. Now that's zero by the way, not O. So we're going to define our padding and our margin to be set to zero. And that's going to basically talk to every single tag in my arsenal. The H1 tag, the block tag, the header tag, whatever tag I put on this page is going to be set to padding of zero and margin to zero. Now, why am I doing both padding and margin? That's a very simple response. Because some browsers default to padding, some browsers default to margin. This takes care of both. Now, the advantage of what I just did here is if you look at your comp here in the top left-hand corner and hit the apply option, it tightened it up to the top left-hand corner. And that's exactly what I want to see. Make a change, save a change. So the first rule that we want to have here when we insert our mock-up or comp and again we did that by the command j under modify page properties now of course if you want to swap this out for another design comp then you just double click and bring in the new design comp we're going to basically build the site from here and we'll continue in the next video